So I was at a Christmas party a few nights ago and uh, we were playing dominoes for cash and prizes. And as it happens, I won this, which is HP Lovecraft Goes to the Movies. The classic stories that inspired the classic horror films. And this is put out by Fall River Press in 2011. Uh, the introduction by Michael Callahan is quite good, although I think there's a few things that can be added to it. Um, one of the fascinating things that Callahan points out is that Lovecraft probably wasn't a huge fan of the movies, and certainly not horror movies. It starts, uh, the introduction starts with a letter f that uh, Lovecraft wrote to the editor of Weird Tales, uh, where he says, The bat made me drowse back in the early 1920s, and last year an alleged Frankenstein on the screen would have made me drowse had not a posthumous sympathy for poor Mrs. Shelley made me see red instead. Ugh! And the screen Dracula in 1931. I saw the beginning of that in Miami, Florida, but couldn't bear to watch it drag to its full term of dreariness. Hence, I walked out into the fragrant tropic moonlight. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, Lovecraft is really um, distancing himself from the horror genre here, and especially as it appears in cinema, which raises the question of where to place Lovecraft in terms of genre, which um, Callahan is not particularly concerned with in this in this introduction to the collection of stories. Um, but, you know, Lovecraft is not really science fiction, and he's not really horror, and nor would one say that he really belongs to the so-called speculative fiction. I mean, I'm sure people argue about this stuff, I don't know, but if anything, in his correspondences, Lovecraft talked about his writing as being weird fiction. And this, of course, is no doubt confirmed by the fact that such a huge majority of his writing appeared in the publication called Weird Tales. But, you know, regardless of how we classify him, the irony is, is that this person was none too fond of horror movies, and yet he winds up becoming one of the most adapted authors into the horror genre. Um, and, you know, as Callahan points out, the love ha this dislike of even movies in general, this Lovecraft, Lovecraft's literature has been drawn upon to create all kinds of films, big-budget films, high-concept films, low-budget films, sleaze and exploitation films, films released for the big screen, films released to the direct-to-video market, there have been short films, animation films, and uh, as he points out, all kinds of directors that are quite famous and screenwriters and actors have worked with Lovecraft material. Uh, and it's even gotten to the point that back in 1996, fans of these films created an H.P. Lovecraft film festival. But what I think we need to add here, uh, Killahan is focusing just on these adaptations of, of the novels by cinema. But the adaptation of Lovecraft extends far beyond the film world. Uh, in literature alone, there's spin-off stories and fan fiction, not to mention countless popular and academic books about Lovecraft's lo uh, life and his writings, um, not to mention comic books. Uh, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of websites devoted to him in the digital realm. And I should mention, too, that there's publishing houses that have been formed, Arkham House and Necronomicon Press in particular. There's also been a sprawling role-playing game called Call of Cthulhu, which was first released in 1981 by Chao Chaosium. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce that exactly correctly. But um, this was uh, continued again and again and built upon this role-playing game. And the role-playing game seems to have been adapted into an online MUD, which was quite naturally called Cthulhu Mud. Um, and uh, along those lines, there's been tons of sculpture created based on the Lovecraft work and paintings and drawings. And also, you know, people have done cultural things. So there's degrees you can buy from the Miskatonic University. And there's also been the creation of, you know, pseudo-religions that have sprung up trying to develop the ideas uh, from... Uh, the Lovecraft uh, world. Uh, one in particular is cosmic disinterism, disinterism, cosmic disinterism, which is, you know, a, a belief that appears to have been derived from all the stories and also comments that Lovecraft made about how he re how he viewed the nature of reality and human humanity's place in it. Um, he himself said that all his stories were based on a fundamental premise that common human laws and interests and emotions have no validity or significance in the vast cosmos at large. And I'm quoting, he's, 
he, he goes on to say, to achieve the real essence of externality, whether of time or space or dimension, one must forget that such things as organic life, good and evil, love and hate, and all such local attributes or a negligible of a negligible and temporary race called humankind can have any existence at all. Now, of course, some people might think this sounds quite nihilistic, but it really isn't at all. What's really being said here is that humankind means something. It means something to mankind and to mankind alone. And that's actually a very, very good thing. That's a powerful thing and a wonderful thing. Um, and this is, uh, of course, part of the huge uh, debate going on now with uh, new atheism and so forth is the question of can humanity have meaning and so forth without a deity. And I think that Lovecraft would say not only can it, but that we must in order to have that full joy. So this is the joy of that literature really brings us as well as art and film and the sciences is that through these things we get to discover what reality means to us and to us alone right so i think that uh these are some very interesting adaptations that uh are not mentioned in the introduction to this book the uh book itself has a great cover um and the stories are laid out in a very nice and pleasing way. The font is great. Check it out. Take care.